Today I'm going to show you how to install Artix Linux, most notably with a fully encrypted um, uh, root directory and home directory, I guess. So you can make sure that your files are nice and safe when you're not using your computer. Um, so Artix Linux is the Linux distribution that I use. It's based on Arch Linux. It's basically the same thing as Arch Linux, except for Arch Linux comes with the much hated System D as an init system. And what Artix does is it actually just allows you to choose between some other init systems that, uh, I don't know, people like to hate less. There are advantages. They're not important for you as a new user. It's all going to be the same. And in fact, installing, installing Arch Linux and Artix Linux is basically the same process. So really this video is going to work for an encrypted Arch setup if you want. In fact, even if you don't want to encrypt it, you just omit one or two commands and it, this video is going to work for you as well. In fact, even if you want to use any of the init systems, uh, you know, run it, open RC, again, just one or two command differences. So this video will work. And also, uh, whether you're installing on legacy gr uh, grub or, or legacy boot or UEFI, this video will also work. So this video is going to work for everyone. Uh, even if you don't want to install Linux, maybe this will work for you as well. Um, so anyway, how you traditionally install, uh, how do you install a Linux distribution? I mean, I assume that most of you guys watching this know how to do this, but I'm going to go to Artix Linux. We're going to go to the download tab. And uh, the only tricky thing with Artix is that, like there are a whole bunch of choices. They have all these different ISOs that you can use. The one that I'm going to use is this one right here, um, the Artix base run it. Actually, technically, I'm not going to use it. I'll explain that in a second. But this is the one that I recommend. This is the one that I usually use. Um, and uh, so you're going to want to download that. It's a little less than a gig. Now, note also, if you just want to install Linux, OK, uh, you don't care about encrypted drives. You don't care about installing it all manually or anything. Don't need to customize it. You could just install it with a desktop environment. You could just like install Mate or Cinnamon or something like that or XFCE or Plasma. You could just, you know, take one of those uh, and you could put it on your USB drive, boot it, and you could install it on the computer and it'd be kind of just worksy. Um, but we're going to do it manually because, you know, that's that's a better way to do it as far as I'm concerned. And again, we need we need to be able to encrypt our drives and stuff like that. Um, I actually hear that nowadays Arch Linux apparently has an Arch install script, that which is kind of funny. Uh, it used to be the Artix, you could, you could um, you know, have Artix Linux install, install itself, but Arch did, would, like, refuse to do that. Anyway, so that's how I'm gonna say uh, I'm gonna say you should do it. I've actually already gone on and uh, installed, or not installed. I've downloaded this. Uh, where is it? Yeah. So I've gone ahead and downloaded this um, ISO here. So what I'm gonna do, actually, I have a USB drive here. Okay. So traditionally, what you do, you put the ISO on this USB drive, and then you you will be able to boot off of this USB drive, and then wipe the rest of your computer and install Arch on it, or Artix in this case. Um, so I'm gonna put this in. I'm gonna put this in my computer. Okay, so now, now I should be able to run uh, lsblk, and you'll see that I have. So these are all the drives that are attached to my computer. This happens to be my main hard drive. This happens to be my uh, media hard drive that's also attached. Um, and this is the USB drive I just put in. Notice that it's uh, 3.7 gigabytes. So what we're gonna want to do? I'm gonna become root here. Okay. So what I'm going to want to do is uh, this SDC, this is our drive, we want to take our uh, ISO file and copy it onto that. Okay, so I'm going to use the command dd. So I'm going to say dd, our input file is going to be the Artix, um, the Artix ISO here. I can just tab complete that name. And then our output file is going to be dev SDC because again, when we ran lsblk, um, SDC is the drive we're going to want to work on. Okay, so slash dev slash SDC, and I'm also going to say status equals progress and block size equals two, although neither of those are technically necessary. So I'm just going to run that, and um, it's going to take a little bit of time. What that's doing is it just copying that ISO of a couple gigabytes onto that drive. Um, and so what we're going to do, or what you're going to do, is that once that is done, you are going to restart your computer with that USB, that bootable USB plugged in. And you're gonna press a whole bunch of uh, buttons. I don't know, F2, F10, F12, it's different on different computers. But <laughs> you're gonna get a menu where you can choose what device to boot off of. You're gonna boot off of that USB. And um, from there, you can actually install Artix. Now, obviously, in that process, we're gonna be deleting all the hard drive you have on your computer. 
Um, so make sure that you have, uh, you're prepared for that. You have all your files backed up. Um, so this is still taking a little bit of time. Now I will note that I am not going to do that. I'm going to do something a little differently because I want it to be easy to record. So I actually have this hard drive that is, you know, I have a USB to SATA uh, connector here. And I'm actually just going to install this. I'm going to plug this into my computer as it is right now. And I'm going to install Artix on this hard drive that I can put in another computer. And um, I'm glad this is still loading so I can talk about what I'm actually doing. So there is also this, um, let's see, Artix, what is it called? There's a package on Artix called RTools Base. And I have this installed. And what this is, is it basically takes all the special scripts that are usually in the ISO that you need to install Artix and it allows you to run them from your own machine. So that's like GenFS tab and like a pack strap and these, these kind of things, or base strap it is on Artix or whatever. And I think there's an equivalent for Arch as well. Uh, let me actually double check. So let's say Arch, uh, I wanna say it's like Ar Arch scripts. Um, oh no, that's, that's. oh wait, yeah, I gotta search like foreign packages. I wanna say it's like Arch scripts. It doesn't really matter. I'm just like killing time while this thing is loading. Um, it is, uh, what is it? What is it? I know, I know it's out here. It's probably, oh yeah, Arch install scripts. Yeah. So that's, so either, depending on which one you're running, you can just install that package and get what you need. So I'm probably, uh, let's see if there's something else I need to talk about, or I might just like stop this while it's loading. It, wait, it doesn't actually matter. You need to do this, but I don't because I'm doing this on my own computer. So I actually, I can just cancel this. I'm going to cancel this. Um, actually, no, I'm going to unceremoniously close out of it, even though that's bad. Uh, so we don't actually need this USB drive. I'm going to pull out, pull it out. Um, so I'm not using that. You do, you do, you need to do that. And once it's loaded, mind you, you should usually type in sync and that'll kind of load, uh, you know, any files that haven't, or that are in memory that haven't like transferred over. So that's good practice. So I am now going to install, or I'm not, I'm now going to put in my hard drive. Okay. So note also we've taken out LSBLK, we've taken out that third drive, SDC, and now I'm going to put in, I'm going to plug in my uh, drive that I'm going to install on. Okay. Now what you're doing is you are rebooting off of that USB and um, once you've backed all your stuff up, now you see, now you will see that SDC on my computer is now this 238 gigabyte thingy that I have. So this is going to be the thing that we install Artix on. Okay. So now we've booted up, uh, you have logged in when you get into Artix type in root as the username and artix as the password, and then you'll be able to start. Okay. Now, interestingly enough, I do actually have a little guide here. I mean, not a real guide, um, but just like, so I don't have to like manually type everything. Um, but I will say this, obviously the real thing to follow is not even this video, but you need to follow the artix Linux installation guide on the wiki. You can pull that up on another computer. Obviously you can't pull it up on the thing you've booted off of. Um, and you might want to look at the Arch one as well, okay? But I'm not going to look at either of those because I basically, aside from basically having them memorized, uh, I actually have all the important notes here, okay? So the first thing you need to note is whether you have a UEFI machine or not. Um, so there are really two ways to like, um, there's legacy boot, and I always prefer legacy boot if you can install that. Um, but a lot of modern machines only have UEFI for booting. And to know whether you have that or not, you want to see, you want to type in ls uh, sys firmware efi fe vars, okay? Now, if you get nothing, you don't have UEFI, you're not using UEFI. Um, but if you do get that, you are probably using UEFI. Now, I will just say UEFI, like there are security benefits to it, like there is a reason that people have switched to it nowadays. But I just, I always recommend avoiding it because honestly, like frankly, it was really created so it would make it difficult to install Linux. And so like it made it easier to lock people into using Windows machines. So that's a real reason it exists. We can all pretend uh, otherwise, but that's basically why it exists. Um, either way, uh, just note whether you're using UEFI or not. And in the installation process, that will, uh, you'll, there, are, there are a couple things you need to do different. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. Firstly, I need to format this drive, this SDC, because what we want, we are gonna have a boot partition and that's gonna be unencrypted. And that's just gonna have the stuff it needs to like start up and know like, oh, I need to decrypt this other drive. And all the data, all the operating system data 
and all your files are going to be on an encrypted partition. That's what we're going to do here. So I'm going to come root here. You're already root if you logged in as root, but so I'm going to run fdisk on slash dev slash fdc. Again, make sure you're running it on the right one and not like, you know, something else you don't want to delete. Um, so we're going to go ahead and delete all the partitions and the data on this drive. Let me actually make myself more opaque here. Um, I'm going to type in D. It has two partitions, so I'm going to type in D for both of them. Or wait, no, it only has one. Never mind. So I deleted the partition. You might need to type D multiple times for deleting multiple partitions. Um, and I'm going to say new to add our boot partition. I'm going to just press enter here. Uh, press enter here for the partition number and for the first sector. For the last sector, I'm going to say, I'm going to make it one full gigabyte. So I'm actually making this, so this is something that UEFI and BIOS um, people might do differently. I'm just going to say use one gigabyte for this and I'm going to make it, I'm going to make things as compatible as I, I possibly can for everyone. Okay. So, uh, because one gigabyte, you can spare one gigabyte, frankly. So then we're going to make another partition. I'm going to make a new partition. Again, primary, uh, actually you can just press enter through all the rest of this stuff um, and just say yes if it gives you that thing. Do you want to remove the signature? Um, so what, uh, what we're doing there is we've created one partition that is one gigabyte and then another partition that is just the rest of the size. And once we're done with FDisk, we're going to uh, type in W to save that. And now we should see... Uh, let me move to the top. Now we should see our partition has two, or our drive has two partitions. Okay, so the one of the things that different that's different from legacy boot and UEFI is that in UEFI your boot partition has to be a FAT uh, partition, a FAT32 partition. Um, honestly, at this point, I kind of just always have my boot. Uh, even if I'm using legacy boot, I will just have it as a FAT partition, just in case later on I want to move to a UEFI machine. So I'm now going to format this. Now I'm going to format this in make with make fs fat f32, and I'm going to run that on dev sdc1. Okay. Now this is us putting a file system on that. Now if you don't, I'm going to well I'll, I'll run this. We've now formatted that with a fat partition. Hypothetically, you could if you wanted to, and you're just using legacy boot, you could format that with ext4 or something else. But again, like I, I like I just format it as fat, even if I'm not I'm not installing for UEFI. But just in case I want to move to a UEFI machine, I go ahead and format it as fat because uh, it's it doesn't really make a big difference if you you just have this one drive on it. So this other part, so our other partition, that's going to be the tricky thing because this is the thing we want to encrypt. So how do we encrypt this drive? Um, so I will go ahead and say a couple people noted I I did a video on encrypting drives in the a uh, couple days ago. And um, the, a lot of people said, hey, Luke, you didn't wipe your drive before you started. Because when you encrypt a drive, it's a good idea, actually, to do something like, you know, uh, take an input of you random, let's see, you dev, you random, and uh, just totally blank over, let's say, dev SDC2, okay? That's, that's a good thing to do because what you're doing is you're putting random data over the whole thing. That means A, people can't look at the stuff that was previously on your drive. And B, it's harder to do meta analysis. Like let's say if your encrypted drive does fall into the hands of the FBI, right? There's, there's some amount of metadata that they could figure out about how much of the, the stuff, how much of this drive is he actually using, blah, blah, blah. Um, so this is something, if you want to be super secure, this is something you might want to do. But the reason I'm not going to do it is it's going to take a long freaking time. It's going to take hours and hours and hours. There, there are quicker commands to do this. Um, and I'm all, I also am going to say that there are ways of doing this after you set up the drive. Like you, I'm just going to do it the normal, you know, I, I guess the normie way. And then there are commands that you can run afterwards where you basically create like a massive file on the partition of just random data from dev you random and then delete that. Um, so maybe I'll talk about that at the end. But I, I, that's all me saying I'm going to skip this step because it's unnecessary and we can basically do it later, even though, yes, there are security reasons where you want to do it at some point. So anyway, let's install a encrypted partition on this, or, or let's make this uh, partition encrypted. Uh, and we do that with the uh, command crypt setup, loop lux format. We're going to run that on dev sdc2. Okay, so oops, oh, not luck format, lux format. 
Um, so it's going to ask you, are you sure you want to overwrite all of this? I'm going to say yes. You're, we're going to enter a password for our partition, and I'm going to make mine password. No one's ever going to guess that. Um, now, you can change these later on. I will say that. But I recommend go ahead and choose a, a good password. This is going to take a little bit of time. Um, okay, it took less time than I expected. but <laughs> So now um, we can, we want to, now that we've created an encrypted a Lux partition on this, we want to decrypt that so we can mount it and install Artix on it. So what we what we do now is we say crypt setup open. We open that partition, dev sdc, and we also give it a title. It doesn't matter what the title is. I'm going to say lol lol. Um, and then it's going to ask for the password that we just gave it. Okay. Uh, so now we have decrypted our drive, and you'll see that it is now this thing, lol lol. Okay, so now... Um, if, if you've installed Arch or Artix before, the process is basically going to be the same from this point on once we mount the drives. Just like the decrypt, we have to do do stuff with like decrypting stuff at the very end and that's very important. So we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. Um, but anyway, let's go ahead and mount these drives. So first we want to mount our root and home partition. And that is going to be at dev, mapper, and then whatever you named it, lol, lol. And I'm going to mount it to MNT. Okay. Uh, oh wait, I forgot to make a file system. Got to do that as well. Uh, so we're going to make file system. I'm going to use btrfs, uh, and I am going to run it on dev mapper lol. lol. Okay, so we we created a a, parti a Lux partition, but we didn't actually put a file system on it. That's why we got that error. So now I'm going to do that. Now it's going to take. This is actually going to take a little bit of time. This might take a minute or so. Um, just uh, that awkward that awkward moment. Do I want to cut the video or do I not want to cut the video? It's just like more extra. Let's see if there's something I can talk about in the meantime. Uh, all right. So yeah, I'll go ahead and say actually. So for the in encryption, um, the only thing that we're going to want to do at the very end to like, the tricky thing is we want our BIOS, we, we want when we boot, we want Artix Linux to know that we want to decrypt this drive. So we're going to add a couple things at the very end to our MK init CPO, and then we're gonna add some special things to our grub configuration to let it know, okay, this is this drive here, this is our special encrypted drive. We want to try to decrypt that when we boot. I'll, you know, ask me to give it the password, um, and then mount that, mount the decrypted drive. So now we have a partition on this thing. Actually, we can now just run the command I tried to run a second ago uh, and mount it uh, to MNT. Now we're going to create a directory mnt boot okay so now you will see in there there's a boot directory and we're now going to mount dev sdc1 to mnt boot okay so now both of our drives both of our partitions i should say they are now mounted at the appropriate location and we can actually install this stupid thing we've been talking about installing <laughs> so uh let's let's go ahead and get this little um uh, these commands, I'm going to be running a lot of them, so I might as well have them over here. So first thing, let's see, so we've done all that. Uh, oh yeah, we might want to go ahead and, I usually omit this because I always forget to do it, but just for speed, you might want to go into uh, pack, uh, Etsy Pacman D mirror list. And this lists out all of the mirrors that you can use for installing uh, or just getting your packages. You may want to move, let's say if you're in France, you may want to move the French mirrors up to the top. So they will be the first ones that you choose. So things go a little faster. Um, so just know that things might move a little more snappily if you do that. Um, but once you've done that, I'm going to actually, let's go ahead and make this a little bit more, oops, a little bit more opaque. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and install all of these packages. Okay. Now we're going to run the base strap command. This is one thing that's different on Artix from Artix or Arch Linux because Arch Linux it's called like pack strap. It's called base strap on um, uh, Artix. But you're going to want to run that on MNT. And then I have a list of packages that I'm going to install. I'm going to go ahead and start. I'm going to let this go ahead and start running. And I'm going to explain in the meantime all the packages that we're installing. Um, so base and base develop. Base is just like the basic system, all the all the tools you need. Base devel is going to be necessary for uh, compiling packages and stuff. Oh, actually, I need to press enter here. Um, all those things are installing. Let me actually make that a little smaller so it looks better or something. 
Uh, so I am installing the run it in its system. So I'm going to install it and e login d run it. Now this is something if you want to install OpenRC uh, or some other init system because you have an emotional attachment to those, you will find, let's see, that there are different commands here. So OpenRC, you install that and e login d OpenRC or S6 or dnit, you know, you can kind of see the pattern, right? Um, so that's what those are for. Um, also, we're going to want to install Linux. It's funny, you didn't have to use to, like, you, you used to be able to just install base and it pulled Linux by default. Um, but uh, I remember because I got comments on my last video, they're like, dude, you forgot to install the kernel, man. You didn't install Linux. It's like they used to pull it automatically. Now they don't. Um, I guess that's that's based because theoretically you could use a different kernel, but I don't know if there are actually any other kernels they offer. Like if there's, what is it, GNU herd, lol, or like BSD. That'd be funny if you could install BSD from Arctic Linux. But anyway, Linux firmware, um, if you don't really need this file unless you know you need it, well actually, yeah, on a modern machine that has some proprietary blobs or something, you might need this. Uh, Grub is the boot. Um, the you know the boot manager network manager this is going to be for getting I mean it's what you expect internet and stuff and you also want to have network manager run it or OpenRC whichever init system you choose um, because that's going to auto start it when you boot now these three packages again this is a run it specific one but these three are for encrypting and decrypting the drive and we're going to need that when we boot and stuff like that NeoVim and Vim obviously they're just necessary for editing files <laughs> And uh, FE Boot Manager, this is something that you're going to need for UEFI. You don't need that for Legacy Boot. So I actually didn't include that in the command that I have here. So now I think we're actually getting close to, uh, wow, that was good timing because I think we're about where we need to be. But that's what all of those are. And mind you, for any of these, like you'll see the commands they give you on the Artix Linux uh, wiki. They just tell you to install like a couple of these at one point in time. Um, and then they tell you to install the other ones with Pac-Man while you're on the machine. You can install any of them, any of these later on when we're on the main machine. Actually, let's do that right now, okay? Because we're, anyway. So what we need to do, so now we have like this, um, again, so we have on mount, we have like our drives mounted. And at this point, we can now use the command that they give you, art, what is it? Artix root. okay? And we can run that on MNT and give it bash as an option. And what that has done is it has now transported us to our newly installed Artix Linux drive like part, you know, it's we are now in the new Artix Linux session. We're not in the old previous one of our, our main computer. So now we can run commands on uh, our newly installed operating system. And basically we wanna make it bootable so that we can actually boot into it, decrypt the drive and all that kind of stuff. Now, as I was saying, any of those packages, now that we're on the machine, we can just run Pacman S. If you forgot to install Grub, you can install Grub right now, right? Um, it's just I put everything in one big command, so just know all that stuff. So now we do kind of the administrivia of installing. Like, um, so first uh, set the time zone. Let's go ahead. Uh, actually, let me. How big do we want it? We want it. We'll want it like this. I don't know. Maybe we want it like this because we might have a big command. So first, we'll set the time zone and how to do that. Um, you just in, what is it, users, share, zone info, there are a bunch of different locations and stuff that you can, you know, you want to get your proper time zone. Mine is going to be America, New York. Um, and you're going to link that to Etsy local time, okay? And that should do nothing when, you're, when you've run it, and you should see that you have an Etsy local time, a link that is going to your proper time zone, okay? Uh, as well, we want to go ahead and update the uh, hardware clock or sync the hardware clock. Okay, run that command, which I mean, you probably actually don't in real life. You probably don't have to run it, but it's just it, it's always in the wiki. So we, we run it. It's tradition, kids. Um, and then as my little guide here says in locale.conf, which will not exist yet. But in this file, we are going to add the following content. We're going to add... Um, Oh, well, I guess this is going to be specific. I'm going to use uh, my language. Is going, my language is going to be English for US, but you might want to change that, obviously, if you're not using a US keyboard and and uh, locality and stuff. Uh, if you want to see, actually, I probably should have done this one first, but you'll also want to open up locale.gen. Locale. Gen. Wait, what is it? Oh, locale.gen, excuse me. 
Um, and this is going to have a link of uh, or a list of all the different locales to use. And in this file, you are going to want to go to your own. I'm going to go to mine and uncomment it. Okay, so we got in US UTF-8 and ISO. Now I've uncommented those. You just uncomment whatever you want. <clears throat> and then you run the command locale.gen. Okay. So all this stuff is, you know, make sure you get the right encoding and, and stuff like that. Um, so now you want to name your computer. So let's say I want to name my computer on a crypt. You're going to put that in Etsy host name. Okay, so now if, just to make sure our host name here is crypt. Okay, and at the same time, you're going to want to go to Etsy hosts. And we're going to add some stuff in here, uh, the stuff that I list here, which again is on the wiki. You can check it if you don't believe me, um, but uh, this is just a, you know for routing your um, IP addresses properly. So we're going to say localhost. Um, actually, do I do I use? Let's see on my main machine. Do I use hosts? Yeah, I do use that. Okay. Um, so so I'm just going to copy the way I have it here, and then we're going to have. Uh, 127.0.1.1, right? Yeah. And then we're going to say crypt, because that's when I named my computer, local domain, and then crypt again. Okay. So all that's kind of arbitrary stuff. Um, now we also want to enable the network, uh, the network manager. So if you don't do this, you will boot up into your machine and you'll realize that the network manager is not actually running and you can't get a connection to the internet and you'd have to start that manually and all that kind of stuff. So this is, uh, I'm gonna run this command here, but I should say that this is gonna be different depending on, this is for people installing for run it. If you're using systemd on Arch, it's gonna be different. But also if you're using like, uh, let's see if there's a, they have a little thing about, um, yeah, th so they do have this. So the command for this is gonna be different. So openRC, it's gonna be RC update, add, you know, network manager, don't ignore that command D, they're using a different thing. Um, so for all of these different init systems, that command is going to be different, but I'm using the one for run it. Um, and a note here that usually you link things to when you're actually using a machine and you want to start a new system, you usually link it to run run it service, but that doesn't exist. Like if you have not boot off that machine, so you actually link it to a different place when you're first installing it. Um, okay. So now let's create a password. I'm going to say password. Um, and I'm going to, my password is going to be the word password. Does that allow it? Yes, they allowed me to do that. Excellent. A lot of times Debian machines, like if you're running for a server, they like they won't allow you to do that. But ah, I'm going to use the word password. Um, now, additionally, you can optionally go ahead and do this. Um, I'm going to create, I'm going to add a user. And I'm going to say, um, you want to add them to the, the wheel group. And we're going to say M in here. And that means create a home directory for him. And I'm going to name him Luke. And I'm also going to say, let's go ahead and add a password for Luke. Um, and we're going to say my password is going to be password. Okay, so the reason I do that is one thing you might want to think about doing um, if you're lazy and you don't want to type in. So okay, let's, let's be totally clear about this. Um, when you have an encrypted drive, you are going to, you're going to boot up your computer. It's going to ask for your decryption password. And then if you don't change anything, it's also going to ask you to log in as your user, right? I actually don't really like that. I like, if I'm putting in one password, I just want it to log me in automatically. Like I don't want to have to worry about putting in another password, especially if I happen to use the same password. I mean, it's not a good idea to use the same password, but frankly, like if you're decrypting your drive, everything is already unlocked. Like having a user password is just like kind of like a formality. Um, so one thing you can do is you can go to Etsy, run it SV, and then go to your uh, TTY1 um, and go to the comp here. So this is optional. I mean, this is like if you if you want it to log you in automatically as your user. So you've already put in your password to decrypt your drive. Uh, when you what you can do is you can you can go in here and say auto login and then give your uh, the name of your user or whatever. And what this will do is when you log in your, or I should say, when you decrypt your computer and it boots up, you will automatically log in as this user so you don't have to worry about it. So that's one option that you can do if you want. Uh, I'm actually not gonna do this here because I, I might do some troubleshooting on this uh, later on and I might not want that to happen. So anyway, so that's that. So now is kind of the tricky part. I don't wanna say the actual tricky part, but this is the thing that can be uh, this now we have to think about decrypting our drive. 
Um, so if you're not encrypting your, er, okay, I guess if you're not encrypting your drive, you can skip this step and go straight to creating a boot, you know, the boot or the grub config. But um, so now we have to decrypt our drive or have Linux be able to decrypt our drive when we uh, boot up. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to makingitcpo.conf uh, and what we're gonna wanna add, we're gonna go to this little line that says hooks, okay? And to our hooks here, we're gonna add somewhere near the end, I wanna say this is a good location, right? Uh, we're gonna put encrypt and LVM2. Now remember, crypt setup and LVM2, those are two things that we actually installed on our computer earlier with that um, base strap command. Just make sure you have those installed. But we're gonna put these here. Um, and actually, let's go ahead and update that. So mk init cpio and uh, give it the p option in Linux. So this, there's a chance that this might give an error um, if we didn't install, no, okay, it didn't. Um, I'll let that run, it'll just take a couple more seconds. Just a couple more seconds of awkwardly sitting here. Um, so if you don't have, if you didn't install the required packages, it might give you an error when it tries to do encrypt or LVM, but we already installed those, so it's no problem. So now what we're gonna do, this is a little tricky. So firstly, Normally, if you type in lsblkf, it's going to list out the UUIDs of all your devices. But because we're on this special Artix, like uh, we changed root into our installation, it actually doesn't do that. So what we want to do now is press Control D, and we're going to get back. We are no longer on our newly installed Artix partition. We're now on the drive or the USB that we were installing it previously. And you'll note when I type lsblkf now, you see all this other stuff, okay? Now, we want all this kind of stuff. We're gonna, we need the UUIDs for our encrypted drive to do the, to boot properly. We're gonna need it for our grub config. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take the output of this command and I'm gonna output it to where we mounted our drives in the file location etsy default grub. Now notice, be extra careful, use two, you know, uh, two greater than signs because we want to output it to the file. We don't want to overwrite the file, but I'm going to do that. Um, and let's see, also while I'm in this main partition, I think I probably, yeah, I mentioned it later on, but we'll go ahead and do this now. One thing you also want to do is the FS tab gen, FS tab gen U and run that amount. And we're gonna output this. Actually, let's see what it does first. So this is a thing that says, okay, I'm gonna look at mount and I'm gonna see what drives are mounted here. And I'm gonna create an FS tab for that. Meaning this is, you know, we're gonna, FS tab is the file that uh, Linux uses to know where it needs to mount drives, okay? So this FS tab gen command gets basically the configuration you have now. And so we're gonna take the output of that command and we are going to output it to mount Etsy FS tab. Okay, again, this is the FS tab on our installation that we're installing. Okay, um, so then once everything is decrypted and, and uh, unlocked and the operating system is starting, uh, it will know where to mount the boot drive and whatever other drives. Okay, uh, all right, so that's the FS tab gen. And uh, now, anyway, we are going to, what was I going to do? Okay, yes. So now we've outputted that, and we also outputted that weird stuff to the grub, uh, the grub, uh, the grub configuration file. Okay. So now what we want to do is we're going to go, we're going to go there, we're going to go to the mount directory again. Okay. Again, we're going back into our installation, and I'm going to open up that file, Etsy grub or Etsy default grub. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to do something. Uh, we're going to go to the bottom of this file and you're going to see all this mess, this actually very glitchy mess that will mess up your grub file unless you do something with it. But this is the stuff we outputted to this file. So firstly, I'm going to delete most of it. The things that I want are um, the, the our partition. We want two things in particular. We want the UUID of the partition, the decrypted or the encrypted partition. And we want the UUID of the decrypted part of that partition once we decrypt it. So these two lines are the things we need. We actually don't even need the, the UUID for that. We don't need this. So I'm gonna take these two lines and I'm gonna put them up, up the top here and I, I'm gonna copy them out actually so they don't cause any issues because that's important. So here's what we're gonna do. To this command here, so this grub command Linux default, we are gonna add these two 
uh, things in a particular configuration. We're going to say, actually, you know what? I should probably look at my main drive here as a guide because I think, because um, I did this before on the, on the um, setup I have here. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to make them look like this. We're going to take the UUID of the thing we want to decrypt and say crypt device equals UUID and then include that UUID. And then we're going to put colon crypt LVM or, or whatever you want to mount it as. Um, then we're going to say root, and this is going to be the UUID of the decrypted partition. We're going to say we want that to be treated as the root. And so we're going to say root equals UUID, and we're going to have that partition. Um, this other stuff you can ignore. That's not relevant. Okay. So now I've switched that, switched the windows here. So we're going to say again, um, see, so make it so you can actually see it. So we're going to say crypt device equals UUID equals. Now we're go I'm going to go here. I'm going to copy this um, UUID and I'm going to put it there. And then, as I said, you also want to give it a name to mount as. This is good. Like we mounted ours at. Uh, or we decrypted it to lol lol, so it's dev mapper lol lol. This is going to be the name where it's mounted, so it's going to be dev mapper crypt LVM. Okay, that's what that is. So we're going to say crypt LVM. Okay, so that part is done. Now we want to say root UUID, and this is going to be the UUID of the root partition, that is the decrypted partition. So I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to put that here. Okay, and that doesn't need anything at the end, so we should be done here. Okay, so that, that's kind of the annoying part um, of setting up booting and stuff like that, but you should be good. You should be good now. Now the last part is to install Grub, um, or yeah, to install, install the Grub bootloader. Install the group bootloader. Um, so what we're going to want to do is type in Grub uh, install. Okay, and we are going to install it, not on SDC1 or SDC2, but just SDC. Now, this is going to be different if you are running a UU, uh, UUE. I'm like forgetting, like there's so many terms, there's so many like abbreviations, it's so annoying. Not UUID, UEFI. So you remember at the beginning, I told you to do that command uh, to check and see if you have a UU, UEFI installation. Well, this is where it matters as well. Because for legacy BIOS, we're just going to run grub install on dev, SDC, whatever, C in our case. But on UEFI, you're going to run this slightly different command. You're going to specify that you want a UE, uh, an EFI target uh, and give it a particular location. Actually, I want to say, uh, maybe you're supposed to change this to just boot. No, I, I think it's boot UEFI or boot EFI. You might want to check the Artix wiki for that. Either way, this is the other part where UEFI is different. Okay, that's all you need to know. But we are not installing for that. We are installing just for a normal grub. So we're just going to run this command. Installation finished. No error reported. Excellent. And for either one, legacy BIOS, legacy BIOS or UEFI, we are going to create our grub configuration. So we're going to say grub make config. And we're going to output that to boot grub grub.cfg. Great. Okay, so, and, and it's important to note um, that this will actually have, since we changed that uh, default grub file, so every time you reinstall grub or it makes some kind of change, it will regenerate this file and it will use these settings that you've specified here. Um, and if you look actually at the, this is just for illustrative purposes, but if you look at the boot file that we created, you will see that it actually puts in this UUID uh, information that we added, right? These are going to be part of, this is going to be part of the boot information. Um, so let me just, I'm just looking at it just to make sure everything's correct, even though I'm sure that it's correct, right? Uh, okay. So now that's done. So we, let's see, we, we have a uh, grub um, that uh, knows which drives we want to decrypt. We also have the MK. So remember when we did the, what is it? MK init CPO. That's just so we start with the modules to decrypt the drive. Uh, we should have everything ready. I, I mean, I'm trying to think if there's anything like it, this seemed easier than I thought it was going to be. Honestly, everything should be done. Uh, let's see. I restarted the network manager and all that kind of stuff. So here's what you're going to do at this point. You are going to X out of this or X out of it. Control D out of that. And you're going to type in reboot. Um, and you're going to take out your USB drive and you're going to see if it boots by itself. <laughs> uh, and hopefully it will have done that. 
Um, so that's what I'm going to do as well very briefly. I'm going to reboot my computer. I'm going to see that I've, I can boot off of this and then I'll come back and give you the final finishing touches. All right, here's the moment of truth. We see that the boot... Oh man, this is embarrassing. You can like literally see me here. All right, it looks like things are loading though, so that's good, right? Uh, so we should have a prompt that asks us for our password to decrypt the drive here. Okay, so there we got it. So I'm going to type in... Oops, oh, I mistyped. How embarrassing. I should have just had it like one letter. Okay, password. My super secret password. Okay, great. So that means that it, it successfully decrypted the drive. So now I'm going to put in my root login, which in my case is root and password, right? Because I'm I'm a elite hacker. Excellent. So that logged in. So I'm also going to run lsblk to check for some things. Look at that. So we have our boot drive mounted. That's important. If you don't have your boot drive mounted, you do need that. You will need that. Even though you booted, when you update stuff, you will need this boot drive mounted. Um, if this doesn't mount automatically, you mess something up with your FS tab file. So go back and gin your FS tab. And then we'll say ping. What side are we going to ping? I don't know. Um, Wibby. Wibby.me. Okay, so we're just going to check and see if we can connect to the internet. Look at that. We're connected to the internet. I'm going to press control C. Let me, let me think what else. So that means that network manager is properly starting. Is there anything else we need to check? Let's, let's check our lang variable. Let's check our lang variable. That's important. Okay. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. So I'm going to say that basically everything like we're, we're in our system. So now I'm going to go back to my graphical environment so I can record in a less awkward way. Man, this, look how filthy my screen is. Oh my, you never notice this when there's like, light on it but man i need to clean this up also look at look at this yeah yeah that's right i, I just wanted it like to be at a good uh, height so i'm going to reboot this and uh we are going to i'm going to talk about some more stuff that is important because obviously you don't want to just be using a black screen right <laughs> all right well congratulations on installing your blank screen for a linux installation now is perhaps the most exciting part of linux installation and i can't guide you through all of that well, actually I do, I do have something to guide you um, but, um, in general, so now you want to install a graphical environment. So usually what you want to do, you want to, I mean, you can go, you might know graphical environments already, but you can go to the arch wiki, look up desktop environments or window managers. Window managers are, are usually like minimalistic desktop environments, like have giant pack, uh, you know, different suites of software that all come together. Um, either way you can look and figure out what you want to do here, but I'll, I'm going to tell you what I do. And what I recommend, just because, I don't know, lots of people do it now. Um, for years, I have had these scripts, which are really a script, called LARBs. I actually now hate this term. I, in fact, I'm thinking about rebranding it and making it more serious. In fact, here's some here's a fun fact. Even though it has this goofy little thing, this goofy fat kid, uh, and his name LARBs, which is just like an obese-sounding abbreviation that I made as a joke, uh, it actually doesn't even tell you what it stands for, because it doesn't stand for anything anymore. It just sounds funny. But e despite the fact that, you know, I still have that, there are literally businesses that now use this as their desktop environment, desktop environment, quote unquote. Either way, so this LARBS is basically a script that just installs the setup that I have here with all the programs I use. And um, the one thing, honestly, if I can toot my own horn, and if I can say that I'm better than like everyone who makes a Linux distribution, the one advantage that my system has over theirs is that Mine is documented, right? So at any time you can type in uh, super F1 and you will literally get a guide that uh, runs you through all of the different key bindings and all how everything is mapped and all these crazy things to do. And actually on the website, larbs.xyz, uh, I'm actually going to redo a lot of this. I might literally rebrand it and call it something different and like actually try and make it real. Um, but like there's actually documentation on all the different stuff that you can use. Anyway, it's super easy to install. So well here, for example, is everything you need to know about editing the status bar and getting what you want or, you know, the, the email program and all the bindings, whatever. Anyway, if you want to install this, this is what I recommend because it's literally easiest. It's easier than all the other stuff and it's better. I mean, there's a little bit of, you got to learn how to work it once you're in it. But I will actually tell you now, I have multiple friends who had never used Linux before and then started using LARBs and that's the only Linux they've ever used and they use it as a, they, they get by. So anyway, you can download the script with this command, uh, just CURL to download, uh, give it the L and O options and uh, just download it from larbs.xyz, the website slash larbs.sh. 
and then just run the script and basically it just runs through the installation for you automatically. Ignore that. It shouldn't have question marks. It's because I'm in the Arch Cheroot environment, I think. Um, or actually, no, I know why I do this. Um, so anyway, yeah, it basically installs everything automatically for you. You just give it a user account and then a password you want for that user. Uh, it can be a pre-existing account if you want. Um, and then, uh, yeah, it already exists. So basically it just installs all the packages itself uh, for you. You don't have to worry about any of this. I need to fix those question mark things, but I think that's only in certain environments. Uh, but it's annoying me now that it's on a video, how embarrassing. But yeah, so it installs all the basic programs. It actually goes through, do I link to the progs file here? No, I don't. Um, so yeah, and you'll basically have a Windows environment that looks like uh, mine and you can, you know, it's using DWM and some minimalist and suckless soft, but it's also very usable. Everything is like very much at your finger uh, fingertips. Everything is a key binding. So that's what I use. That's what I recommend as a graphical environment. But if you don't want to use that, you can of course do your research and install any of this other stuff. Um, the process is in general like pretty simple. So you can go to a desktop environment. Let's say we want to install uh, Cinnamon. Um, you would go in, you would, you would install the program. So it would just be Pac-Man S Cinnamon. Uh, and then you usually in the Xinit RC in your home directory as your user, you can just add, okay, begin. When I start, run the command start X, uh, start Cinnamon. And that's how it works, right? So yeah, that's usually, usually you type in start X to start the graphical environment. Um, uh, right, so I mean that, but that's the idea of how it works. So you can go through the Arch Wiki, you can test out all these different graphical environments um, if you'd like. There, there are so many choices, like there's all this stuff here. Um, honestly, it might be better to start with a window manager if, you can fig if you're smart enough to figure that out. Some of them are very much not documented. That's again why I recommend mine. Um, so uh, yeah, so anyway, aside from that, uh, check that out. Uh, congratulations on your new installation uh, that is encrypted. You're a little safer. Um, go to larbs.xyz if you want to check out my setup or honestly look at any of my videos to see what it kind of looks like. Um, uh, aside from that, look at that. I even have like the little um, old school web button nowadays. Someone made that. Actually, I think I made this one. So anyway, that's it. I'll see you guys next time. Um, yeah, goodbye. <laughs>